What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. Baby it's always some gossip going on about me. How I spend all my money on my perfumes because I be smelling good and I be wearing designer fragrances. I do be smelling good and it is designer perfume but I don't be spending a whole lot of money because I use Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service where I choose a new designer fragrance every month. 600 designer fragrances for you to choose from. Perfumes, colognes, unisex and with each fragrance you buy you get a 30 day supply. Check out the fragrances I got this month. Camilla Roland and this fragrance is very floral. It smells like I'm wearing a bouquet of roses. Juicy Couture Honey, Viva La Juicy, like a vanilla caramel type smell. One of those sweet, good smelling perfumes. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, Lemon Apple Cedar type smell. It is my jam. And look at the little applicator. Roll the perfume up, get you a couple of sprays and you in the door. And then the applicator is reusable. That is a lot of doggone perfume. After 30 days, I always still have some left. And yes, I do get three fragrances per month because I upgraded my subscription because I feel like I deserved it and y'all deserve it too that is why I'm offering you guys 55% off of your first month that is seven dollars for your first month all you have to do is click the link below and use this discount code and Scentbird is now available in Canada so we can all walk around smelling like a million bucks now it's time for my member shout outs. First on the list is Shima Washington, Joycelyn or Jocelyn Mosley, Globe 1968, Joe Baby Abel, Character 18, Be More Mommy, I Terry, and Alishayi Benjo. Alishayi Benjo. I'm so sorry if I slaughtered that name, but you know I'm country now. Thank you guys so much for becoming members of Ashley Says So. If you guys are members and I have not called your name yet, y'all, I am working through this list. I promise you I am. But anyways, you have a shout out coming up soon. Now let's go ahead and get to what this video is about, honey. And y'all know it's about the tea, gossip, scandal, and rumor on Sister Sledge. Let's get to it. In 1923, a baby named Edwin Sledge was born in Houston, Harris County, Texas. His father's name was William Daniel Sledge and his mother's name was Willie Phelps. As a teen, Edwin took an interest in dancing and entertainment and soon he took an interest in tap dancing and boy was he great at it. So great that soon any place that he performed would draw huge crowds and it wasn't long before he started doing tap professionally. Now by the 1940s, Edwin actually was a professional tap dancer and he was also one half of a duo. His partner was a man named Fred Davis and the duo performed under the name Fred and Sledge. And Fred and Sledge could really bring down the house with their sophisticated tap moves. In fact, in 1948, they were the very first African Americans to perform on Broadway. And that is when they performed in a stage production called Kiss Me Kate. Kiss Me Kate put the guys in a position to move up even further, and before you know it, they were on TV. They even performed on The Ed Sullivan Show. Now, Edwin was all about his dance career, and he was absolutely enjoying this road to stardom, but along the way, he started enjoying something or someone just as much. And that was a drop dead gorgeous dancer named Flores Williams. Now Flores wasn't actually a big time dancer although she had achieved some triumphs but I do believe it was when Edwin had a show and he was backstage. I think they actually met at a show backstage where they were possibly both performing. And when they met Sparks flew like a movie child. They were in love and it was not long before they were married. And honey, let me tell you, as soon as they got married, baby, they could not wait to be laid down rolling around under the covers. And all of that rolling around produced several children. Their names were Norma Carol Sledge, Deborah Debbie Elaine Sledge, whom was born in 1954, Joan Joni Elise Sledge, whom was born in 1956, Kim Sledge, who was born in 1957, and Kathy Sledge, who was born in 1959. Now, other young couples who had birthed so many children in this small amount of time possibly didn't even know what to do with all of these children. But Edwin and Flores knew exactly what to do because, hey, they were show business. So it came quite naturally to them that they would help cultivate and grow their own daughters up in show business. And they did a good job, but the real force and the real push behind them 
was actually Flores's mother, those girls' grandmother. And her name was Grandma Viola. And Grandma Viola herself had also been a part of show business as an opera singer. So she was really like the one behind the throne. She was the real force. And she was the one that would really set the girls on track to be on their way. Now, per the rumors, Grandma Viola stayed on the girls. And sometimes it would be grueling. They were always singing and always practicing and always trying to entertain. But luckily, the girls were gifted. So that made the process a little bit easier. The only thing they really truly had to work on was developing their voice. And Granny Viola would make sure that happened. And she also made sure that these girls would have a stage presence, that they would not be scared to get in front of people and sing, as well as getting them a lot of recognition. And that is because Granny Viola had these girls performing everywhere. Baby, them girls were singing at every church program, every community program, every charity event, and sometimes even at political events. Basically, every time you turned around, there go Mrs. Viola Williams' grandchildren. As a matter of fact, that was their moniker. That was their name, Mrs. Williams' grandchildren. Now, as the girls got older, they continued to perform, and they also all attended Onery High School. And from what I found, it seems like the girls were very pretty. They were very popular. You know, they kind of fit in with everybody. And one by one, they graduated from Onery High School, where they moved on to Temple University. And one by one, they graduated from there as well. Now see, even in high school, I told you that the girls had kept up with their performing. But by the time they did get to high school, it wasn't just local performing anymore. Like they were touring up and down the East Coast. And no, they were not this big, huge group or anything like that. You know, they were still very much just getting started. So they didn't have like this entourage and drivers and all that good stuff. It was actually their mother, Flores, who drove them up and down the road in a bus. And as far as their father, Edwin, I'm not even sure if he was still supporting the girls at this time because, see, he and Flores ended up divorcing in the 1960s. So I know I didn't see anywhere where he would actually tour with them or do anything with them musically, but I'm not even sure if he was even still in the picture as a father anymore, period. Because it's claimed that Flores really had a hard time, said that she was struggling. Sometimes she had to work like two and three jobs, and you know, when she left the girls, she would have to leave the girls by themselves, and so it doesn't seem like their father Edwin really had any hands-on experience with the girls. Whatever the case though, when it came down to entertaining and show business, the girls were doing swell and they were quickly making a name for themselves. And on top of that, they were just like their mother. I mean, they were absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. They were built magnificently, especially for that time period. I mean, this is the late 60s, early 70s. Every single one of them had those long, slender legs that came all the way up. They had the thin, slight hips and waist that sat on top of those legs. And their faces were like a dream. I mean, they were very angelic and very beautiful beautiful, looked very innocent. You know, they were just, they just really had it all. And of course, the boys and men would be super attracted to these girls. And it was really a situation where the men could be like, you know, take your pick because every single one of them is beautiful. So, you know, just get who you can get, guys that type of thing. But to get back to their music, like I said, these girls were still largely unknown to the world, but you could just tell that they were gonna blow up soon. They just had the it factor. And they were working their little behinds off. And by 1971, they had released their first single. And this was a song called Time Will Tell. And at the time, they were signed to a label called Money Back. And the label actually wanted their money back because this song, Time Will Tell, did not do anything. But then in 1973, they released another song, and this song did a little bit better. But in 1974, things really looked to be turning a new leaf for the girls. And this is because they did record a song that did become successful, and this song was called Love Don't Go Through No Changes On Me. And it was a really huge hit in Japan. I mean, the Japanese people went crazy over this record and crazy over these girls. They even flew the girls to come down and sing at the Tokyo Music Festival, in which which, Sister Sledge, they ended up winning the silver medal. Now this international success put their names on the map enough where they were invited to perform at the Rumble in the Jungle. You know, the Thriller in Manila, Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. Yes, the sisters were invited to perform at the concert before the fight. And this concert was called Zaire 74 and in actuality, the girls performed alongside James Brown. Now throughout the 70s, the girls recorded more and more music, some being successful and some 
being not so successful. And then right towards the end, like around 78, maybe early 79, they kind of just really came to a standstill. You know, they actually were um, considering other options. You know, maybe we should just try to do something with our degrees. What if this music thing does not work for us? But they were signed to Atlantic and Atlantic luckily did not want to give up on the girls without trying one more avenue. And this was to hook them up with Niall Roger. And you know Niall came gliding through showing all them teeth with that gap busted wide open honey. And he got his little hip tail on the beat and he went to work. And what he was looking for was a type of feel good music. A type of dance music. Kind of just like a mixture of different type of music to set the groove. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. While the beat was hitting to everybody who had heard it, they would not let the actual sisters hear the beat. Kathy, Debbie, Joni, all of these girls wanted to hear the beat, but Niall kept telling them, no, you cannot hear it because they wanted it to seem spontaneous. They wanted the girls to have all of that excitement from hearing the beat and be able to sing with that original initial excitement. That was a splendid, fantastic idea because it came across just the way that they wanted it to come across. As soon as the girls came in there and then Kathy got to, everyone can see we're together as we walk on by. Yes, Kathy. Anyways, when she came in there, as well as her sisters laying down those vocals, Niall Rogers knew that he had a hit on his hand. And when they released the song, We Are Family, which is what it was, it was a mega hit. Oh, you heard the song all over the world, honey. You had all the family singing at the family reunions, you know, at all the barbecues. Heck, people who weren't even family, people who weren't even friends, child, just strangers, sitting up there singing it together having a good time partying we are family really was an instant classic the song went all over the world it took sister sledge all over the world and they finally had their chance to really make something of themselves they were now set on the path for superstardom and since that is the case Y'all know what time it is. It is time to get to the messy, scandalous tea and gossip. Um, there's really one main thing that is going on with them, and that is what we're gonna talk about. So let's get to what we got. Now first, let me start with a few off the wall type rumors. The first one is the rumor that says Sister Sledge as a group started off supposed to be marketed off like the Jacksons. In fact, they were supposed to be the female Jacksons, you know, with the younger kid sister as the lead singer. They would kind of try to style the sisters like the Jacksons with the outfit fits and the hairstyles and things like that. Well, the problem came in and the reason this marketing did not go as planned is because those girls did not get a hit while they were still very young. You know, We Are Family, their all over the world hit came out when Kathy, well, she recorded the song when I think she was 16, but by the time it made it famous and all over the world, I believe she was 17 or even 18 years old. So that is when they changed the marketing scheme and they turned these girls into like the gorgeous, sensual young ladies. Then you got another rumor that includes the Jacksons or better yet let me say one Jackson and this is Michael Jackson and this is the rumor that either Kathy or Kim possibly may have dated Michael Jackson. And let me rephrase that actually. I shouldn't say dated. I should just say kind of spend some time together. There are a few rumors going around that one or both of these sisters spent some alone time with Michael Jackson. Alone time. And I ain't gonna lie because I like Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. So I was kind of hoping to see where this rumor was true. But it looks like lies to me guys. And let me tell you the reason I say that. The reason I say that is because I have pinpointed two interviews where Kim does an interview and Kathy does an interview. And in these interviews they mention Michael and they say oh you know I toured with Michael he was such a beautiful sweet soul you know we shared some conversations but like they toured with him it didn't say anything about me and Michael in the back room bumping and grinding then you have the rumors about James Brown and Sister Sled or Joni Sled and these rumors claim that Joni Sledge took a liking to James Brown and James Brown took a liking to Joni Sledge as well as the other Sledge sisters but he and Joni really had like a connection. Now I don't believe that this connection ever got sexual but they did have like a little uh, relationship especially when they toured over in Africa. In fact it is claimed that Joni actually taught James Brown French and I guess James just kind of came to Joni and was like I want to speak French to the people. I don't want to speak French to the people. And so Joni is like, okay, you know, I can teach you to say hello. You know, just say bonsoir. And I'm guessing James was like, you know, bonsoir, 
on his way or some I don't know. But however he said it, when he said it, all of his homeboys and yes men around him was like, yes James you got it. Man you really gonna knock them folks out. And when they were doing this, they were looking to Joni to confirm, you know, that James Brown got it right. But they said Joni was sitting over there like, uh, no he does not have it right. And if y'all don't let me teach him, y'all gonna have him walking out on that stage looking like a fool. And supposedly they just kept practicing this back and forth and at the end Joni taught him how to say it. And so there really was like a little small kind of friendship connection there but um all of sister sledge like really revered james brown now check this rumor out now this rumor is a little bit juicier and a little bit messier so debbie the eldest performing sister has been married to a guy named jerome de bruin I think that's how you say his name. This is Debbie's second husband, and it says she's been married to him ever since the early 90s. Now, that's all well and fine, but per the rumor on the streets, Debbie was not the original sister that was interested in De Bruin. Now, baby, the folks say that it was Kim that wanted De Bruin for herself. Said it was her that was cheesing and smiling all up in his face. Don't ask me if they ever got it popping. Do not ask me if they were ever officially in a relationship. All I know is that Kim was the one that wanted the man first, but the man ended up with Debbie. It may have been innocent, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, the gossip on the street says that Kim had eyes on him first. Now this next rumor is about the actual group's name, Sister Sled. This group actually went by a multitude of names, but originally I think the main name that they stuck with was the Sledge Sisters. Well, the T says that they went to some little Rudy Poo joint. This is when they were still very much unknown. Well, when it was their time to come to the stage, the host or the MC of the show was basically like the Sludge Sisters. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, the Sister Sisters. I mean, no, wait a minute, the Sledge Sisters or the Sister Sledge out of somebody, the Sister Somebody. And so that last thing he said, the Sister Sledge, although he had remixed their group name, they actually kind of liked that. So from that point, they went by Sister Sledge. Now this next rumor is pertaining to the song, He's the Greatest Dancer. Y'all know the song where on the video they were sitting up there, oh what, wow. He's the greatest dancer. If y'all have never seen that video, I'm gonna put it in the description. That's definitely what they were doing, some kind of move like this. But anyways, there was a lyric in that song that basically said the man was the creme de la creme and that she wanted him to take her home with him. So Kathy was only 16 years old at the time, so supposedly this was a big ruckus because she was singing these lyrics. Now, per an interview I saw Kathy do, she didn't have a problem singing this song because she said she didn't really know exactly what those words meant anyway, but her sisters, and I believe her mother did have a problem with her singing these lyrics because they were like, you know, what is this 16 year old girl talking about? She wishes this man will take her home. But as we all know, when it comes to things like this, usually the studios win because the studios have more power and they pretty much say, hey, you're gonna sing it or we're gonna get somebody else to sing it. So Sister Sledge pretty much had to pipe down and let Kathy sing that song and she did. So anyways, those rumors were just some type of off the wall type rumors. Now it's time to get to the real tea of the video. And that is the tea about what happened to these sisters' career, what happened to them professionally and in their personal relationship. So after We Are Family, although the girls had other hits such as He's the Greatest Dancer, the song I was just talking about, as well as Thinking of You, the other music they put out after these songs just really wouldn't catch on. They tried and they tried and they tried. They put all of this work into it, all of this time, all of these blood, sweat, and tears, but they just really could not catch a break. Nothing would catch the heat of We Are Family. And so slowly but surely, the fanfare started falling off and the group itself started falling off. And as we know, when the tide starts turning bad and things start falling apart and the music is not hitting as much anymore, little fires start to spring up everywhere and that is what it's rumored was happening to sister sledge it is said that little things started springing up and jealousy and envy was amongst those things now listen at this there may have been jealousy in more than one party but there's definitely gossip on the streets that claims that Joni may have been a bit jealous of kathy and this was supposedly because Joni had a voice just as good as kathy in fact, per the rumor, Joni and Kathy sounded a lot alike. Not only did Joni and Kathy sound alike, Joni and Kathy had very similar personalities. They were the main extroverted ones, you know what I mean? They were the ones that can go anywhere and meet new friends and you know, they love to pump the crowd up and all of that good stuff. And Kim and Debbie had more introverted or stand back personalities. 
So supposedly because Joni and Kathy were the same way and their voices were alike, um, supposedly Joni didn't understand why Kathy was pretty much the de facto lead singer. Now Joni is said to have led some songs, so they did let her exercise her voice somewhere, but she still was not considered the de facto leader of the group like Kathy was. And like I said, Gossip on the Street says that Joni was a little bit jealous of that. I honestly thought it was Debbie, the eldest sister, who had some jealousy towards Kathy. That's just me on the outside looking in. But like I said, Gossip says that it was Joni, but then again, this is all gossip, so who's to say what's true or what's false? Now here's the thing though, if Joni really did want to be lead and she was kind of causing some ruckus over it, well baby, guess what? She got her chance very early on. And that was because in 1989, Kathy started to feel like Sister Sledge was at a standstill, which they were at a standstill. And Kathy was still pretty much very popular, so she wanted to have a solo career. And when it comes to this solo career, this is when things get a little iffy. Because Kathy did indeed go solo, but when she first went solo, she would still perform sometimes with her sister. But things just were not the same. They didn't feel the same, the unity wasn't the same, and then Kathy started to notice like little attitudes and people said in certain rooms. For instance, some or all of the sisters felt like Kathy shouldn't really be the face of the group anymore. Baby, the gossip out here say they told Kathy straight up, you will not be the lead singer for this group anymore. You got your own solo career. But people, the audience, wanted Kathy to sing lead. You know what I mean? They were used to her singing lead. And Kathy wanted to continue singing lead, but personal feelings supposedly got in the way. And like I said, Sister Sledge told Kathy, you do not need to sing lead on these songs anymore. And so it was kind of like where she could perform with them but she needed to be with the background singers and let somebody else take lead and it really seems like it was some pettiness from both sides because Kathy being a little petty herself just basically stopped performing with the sisters at all in 1992 that is when she released her own solo album this album was called Heart. And this album definitely did not give Kathy the push to solo superstardom that she was looking for. I mean, it charted at number 86 on the R&B chart. And the best thing that came out of it chart-wise was a song called Take Me Back to Love Again, and that charted at number 24. So eyes, of course, that were on the outside looking in, started to see Kathy maybe made a mistake by going solo. But see, you got some pride, because see, per the word on the streets, even if Kathy felt like she made a mistake going solo, or she wanted to go back with her sisters, she had too much pride to basically kneel down and say that. And then her sisters supposedly had their own little, mm-hmm, look at her, she ain't nothing now. You know what I mean? So they also were not coming back to Kathy saying, hey sis, why don't you just come back to us? So it just really seems like some petty, messy feelings were really just driving these sisters apart. And honestly, this growing apart or this separation really did not help either one of them because Kathy did indeed keep pushing with her solo career and Sister Sledge kept going and doing what they were doing, but neither Kathy Sledge nor Sister Sledge found much success in their endeavor. And then somewhere along the line, these women allowed these feelings to engulf them and envelop them so much that they straight up just stopped talking to each other. There was Kathy over here and there was Joni, Debbie, and Kim over here. And so both are steady working all through the 90s, all through the 2000s. And then around 2010, 2011, I believe, Kathy did end up having a hit, but it was like those dance club hits. And so outside of this song, Kathy really was not doing much. But see, Kathy, who had been going under the name Kathy Sledge at this time, had a bright idea. Now, Kathy Sledge might not ring no bells, honey. Probably ain't nobody booking her. But when you hear Sister Sledge featuring Kathy Sledge, a ring a ling a ling honey, now that got some weight behind it, you know what I'm saying? And not only was she going by that, she was also going by Kathy Sledge of Sister Sledge. She was making sure to put the name Sister Sledge in her tour name, and yes, she was getting booked left and right. And I'm sure she was just doing what she had to do for her money. Like I said, Kathy Sledge probably just wasn't ringing no bells like that because her solo career didn't really do that well. But when you put Sister Sledge behind it that's when everybody's like oh yeah you know she's the lead singer yes we want to come see her but while she was over here raking in the coin her real sisters was over there frowned up in the face baby they didn't like that because they felt like Kathy uh you ain't a part of sister sledge no more how dare you sit up here and try to use our group name you left to go solo in 1989 remember and per the word on the streets to them what it felt like is that Kathy pretty much went solo and abandoned them she 
went solo, she tried to do her thing. Well, when her thing started floundering, kind of like she wants to like pick them up off the shelf when she wants to use them, but then, you know, uh, put them back down when she's all good. Even though she wasn't using them per se, she was still using their group name. They were Sister Sled. And so they were said to have told Kathy numerous times, stop using our name. You are not Sister Sledge anymore. And basically you're doing like false advertisement or having people come to your concert under false pretenses. And this was said to have hurt Kathy because she wanted to eat, she needed to eat. And so she felt like her sisters were being very low down to try to stop her from using this name. And also she used to be a part of Sister Sledge. Like she was there from the start. So she felt like that gave her a right to be able to use the name as well. Well baby, let me tell you, her sisters did not think so at all. In fact, Kathy kept using the name and continued to tour. Honey, don't you know her sister sued her behind? Debbie, Joni, and Kim sued the mess out of Kathy and told her that that was not her name to you. And this is said to have absolutely stunned Kathy. She could not believe her sisters had gone this far. Now that lawsuit happened in 2013. But like I said, the sisters were supposedly already not speaking to each other. In fact, um, when Kim got sick, in 2010 she had h1n1 y'all remember the bird flu mm -hmm. everybody was sitting up there scared they was gonna wake up with feathers and dead yeah so kim ended up having that that almost took her life i don't even think kathy was talking to her sisters while this was even going on and so the lawsuit happened in 2013, but honey, when 2015 came around, baby, it was almost some knockdown, drag out stuff happening between these sisters. This is when Pope Francis came down to visit in Philadelphia, baby. And there are about five different sides to this story, but I'm just gonna tell y'all two. Let's start out with Kathy's alleged side. Kathy found out that the Pope was coming to Philadelphia, okay? And she thought it would be a great idea if Sister Sledge, she and her three sisters, all four of them, go and perform for the Pope. So she and her team contact Sister Sledge and their team, and everybody is working together, everybody is getting in preparation. Kathy's sitting up there practicing. This just our family, Jew. Well, baby, they say 24 to 48 hours before they were supposed to perform, Kathy received a call or a letter or an email or some child telling her behind the that she was not to walk on that stage with Sister Sledge, that she was not a part of the group, and they had not invited her to sing with them. They will be performing alone. Oh, as a matter of fact, Kathy wrote a very heartfelt letter to her sisters, basically telling them, you know, let's let bygones be bygones. And child, basically her sisters told her, ain't no bygones, baby, it's be gone. You ain't performing for that Pope. Girl, you know, Kathy probably just wanted to, oh, what? Wow, all upside her doggone sister's head. In fact, I was playing about that, but listen, Gossip on the Street says that Kathy really was making threats to walk up on that stage anyway. It's claimed that she was threatening to crash that Pope performance. And not only crash it, baby, says she was gonna take a mic and bust all of her sisters upside the head, honey, because she was ticked off. Because remember, Kathy said this whole thing was her idea in the first place. That is supposedly Kathy. Kathy's side of the story. Well, the story of Sister Sledge or Debbie, Joni, and Kim, allegedly their story is that Kathy had not even been talking to them. You know what I mean? She had not even had any contact with them and so now she wanted to jump on the stage with Sister Sledge and start trying to sing lead like it was all about her after not even really dealing with them for real? No ma'am, you're not invited. Like, we gonna treat you like you treat us, like you don't know us. And I don't know which one of those sides is true, but I do know that Kathy had had absolutely enough enough of her sister's shenanigans. She was tired of this. Y'all already ensued her. You know what I'm saying? And y'all are humiliating her because she has, I'm sure, told people that she's going to perform for the Pope. You know, even her team, anybody that's looking forward to this, you guys have basically told her she could not be a part of it. So Kathy was sick of it, baby, and she released a statement. Kathy wasn't playing with And I usually don't read stuff full on out. I just kind of tell y'all the gist of it. But baby, I'm about to read this because baby, it was some snapping fingers to be had after this statement. Okay, y'all, here go the statement. Although the performance is being promoted as though all four original members of the group will be in concert, 
Sisters, Joni, Debbie, and Kim have refused to allow the youngest sibling, Kathy, original member and iconic voice of Sister Sledge, from participating in the performance. Child, snap, snap, like I said, you hear how Kathy called herself the original member and iconic voice of Sister Sledge? Oh yeah, baby girl was mad. Boom, honey, Kathy let it all out. Kathy said, y'all want to sit up there and be messy? Y'all want to sit up there and block me? Then y'all ain't issuing a statement or nothing like that. Y'all basically just trying to do this behind closed doors, letting the world not see how you guys treat me. Oh, baby, I'm gonna blast y'all. And on top of Kathy releasing this statement, she also ended up doing an interview soon after with The Insider. And in this interview, she basically told how her sisters would not let her lead the songs anymore. You know, how there's kind of been a rift ever since she went solo. And just really just telling everything her sisters had done to her. Talked about the lawsuits and everything. Kathy put it all on the table. So after she releases this statement and then she does this interview with the insider, it really makes Debbie, Joni, and Kim look really bad. You know what I'm saying? They really look like the evil, jealous, envious stepsisters. You know, all the while making Kathy look like Cinderella. I mean, people started going in on the actual sister sledge. Those three sisters, baby, they started going in. Folks started leaving comments calling Debbie an alien, telling Kim that she was a nobody, telling Joni that she was jealous because she couldn't sing as good as her younger sister. And I'm sorry, y'all. I'm starting to lose my voice again. But anyway, she made them look horrible to the world. But see, with all this, although it's making Kim, Joni, and Debbie look bad and look really evil and jealous and stuff like that, you really have to keep an open mind because you have to remember that we are on the outside looking in. We don't really know exactly what's going on. And I say this because of the next thing that happened. Honey, after Kathy did that insider interview, child, it lit some kind of match up under Debbie, honey. Debbie became sick of it. And she was like, okay, sis, you want to set the record straight? Baby, we'll set the record straight. And that that is when Debbie released some of the most uh, messy, you know, some folks would call it trifling, I don't know, but child, she released this statement on Facebook, and whoo, the mess was heavy, baby. Let me read it to you. All right, y'all, here go Debbie's comeback statement. I am doing the unthinkable. I am writing a personal letter to my sister publicly. Tried everything else. I will not give up. I don't care who reads this, as long as she does. I'm looking for one person's response hers. Dear Kathy, I hope you are well. We all miss you. Continue success on your solo career and we really mean that. How's that going? We are all well and cheering for you, especially when you are honest. When you are not honest and lie, it is hurtful to us and to others, including family members. When you allow unscrupulous agents to book your solo concerts as Sister Sledge concerts without our knowledge or consent, it is dishonest, hurtful to yourself, your family, and others. Why would you allow that? Especially in view of the fact that it is illegal and against the signed court-ordered settlement you willingly agreed to. Please don't do that. You are talented and gifted and do not need to resort to lies. Is there something I can help you with? I would love to. What is your agenda? Perhaps that is why we have not heard from you in all of these years. Perhaps your agenda does not include being open and honest with your sisters. It certainly does not seem to exhibit the unity we stand for. It does not communicate. Remember I sent you an invitation to my wedding anniversary, vow renewal, no response or acknowledgement from you or other family members who were affected by your lies. That was very hurtful. When a life event is not even acknowledged by an invitee, it is hurtful, but more so when the invitee is a loved family member. You even posted a video of my vow renewal on your social media, which lets me know you were aware of it, but you never spoke to me or acknowledged my invitation to you. The last letter we received from you was in September 2015. After 25 years of basically no response to our communication and personal letters, we all thought, at last, signs of communication opening up. That was six months ago. You did not acknowledge my response to you then, but you did go to the press with lies. When will you break your silence towards us? Why not end it? I am claiming and declaring a prophetic declaration for this year, 2016. Breakthrough. Walls come down. Healing, restoration, and renewal now. I forgive you. We forgive you. Hope to hear from you personally soon, apart from lawyers, just as a sister. 
Love, Debbie. P.S. Ain't you tired? <clears throat> Baby, I told you, messy, juicy, scandalous, just everything. Can you believe Debbie went online and said this for the world to see? Had to be some kind of desperation going on or something like that, or Debbie was just really, really upset. And this is why we cannot hold these grudges and all this kind of stuff, because all of this has just blown up into one big mess. When Kathy left that group as a solo artist, and all of these negative feelings started between the sisters and all this kind of stuff, like that should have been let go earlier because see now it's festered into this big open wound now there are like a war with words you know what I mean and there are hurt feelings and tears on both sides and it's just too much pride too many egos and it's ridiculous when pride can like just ruin whole relationships and that is what was happening between these sisters and so I'm sure that y'all can imagine after this very public feud or the feud that was turning very public very messy very nasty like the sisters like it was just over with pretty much at this point point. and also I want y'all to tell me in the comments do y'all think Kathy or Debbie was wrong or do you think Kathy was right, Debbie was wrong, Debbie was right, and Kathy was wrong? Tell me what y'all think about these very public grievances and airing out this dirty laundry like very, very publicly. What do you guys think about that? And now let's talk about Joni for a second. I do know that in 1996, she ended up witnessing a murder and this murder affected her deeply. And she did get married, I believe in 2002 to a man named Thaddeus or maybe 2000 to a guy named Thaddeus, but they ended up getting a divorce and what plenty of people don't know is that towards the end of her life Joni was actually staying with Debbie now I don't know if she was still living with Debbie when she ended up passing away but I do know that in some of her last years on earth she was in fact living with Debbie he passed away on March the 11th 2017 at the age of 60 years old now there were some people out here questioning if Joni had a drug problem at least at some point in her life for her to pass away so early but I didn't see anything where they found any drugs in her system System, and it's claimed that she died of natural causes but here is the reason why I think people question that something was going on with Joni and that is because an autopsy was refused for her an autopsy is refused for a 60 year old lady who seems to be in good health who was the day before just cool and having a good time and stuff like that and then this next day she is dead you know, so I don't know. I don't want to start no conspiracy theories or anything like that. I'm just saying the questions are around where people kind of feel like there was something deeper going on with Joni. Now, regarding the few, Kathy said that she and Joni did end up making up. She said that in January of 2017, she had spoken to all of her sisters. You know, they kind of like all cried and hugged and, you know, just all made up. And then, like I said, Joni passed away in March. So they were able to reconnect before Joni passed away. With, but judging by the rumors that are out today or the rumors that have been put out since 2017 it seems like the sisters just could not keep it together and let me give you the alleged details behind this so after Joni passed away in 2017 the sisters just could not keep contact so they drifted away from each other and then right at the start of COVID it is claimed that Kim came knocking on Kathy's door and when Kathy opened the door Kim with tears in her eyes was like you know I I am sorry sister I'm sorry for the way we have treated you over the years I'm sorry I love you like I just want that sister bun back I want my sisters back Kathy was said to have accepted her sister's apology and she and Kim are good you know what I mean they go and get coffee they go and have drinks they are real sisters again but see now it's claimed that the problem lies with Debbie because see the tea on the street says that after Kim and Kathy started talking again and getting back together they talked about you know Sister Sledge how they all used to sing and how Sister Sledge should be Debbie Kim and Kathy you know because Joni has passed away so Kim and Kathy have been talking about getting that together that is something they want well allegedly when they reached out to older sister Debbie telling her their idea of getting Sister Sledge back Back again with all of the original players that were still alive that Debbie either blew them off and told them no I'm doing my own thing or she just did not respond to them at all and when I say Debbie said no I'm doing my own thing yes she is doing her own thing but she's doing her own thing with the name sister sledge 
Yes, Debbie Sledge is touring and performing under the name Sister Sledge, but she is performing with her children. She's also performing with her nephew, which is Joni's only child, a guy named Thaddeus. And so that is Sister Sledge now. If you book Sister Sledge, supposedly that is who you will get. They have a website and everything. Like they got a Facebook page, like that's Sister Sledge now. Well, of course, Kathy and Kim are like, uh, no, that's not Sister Sledge. We are Sister Sledge. Why don't you want to come back and perform with your sisters and make this one whole Sister Sledge like it's supposed to be? And to be honest with you, I don't know why Debbie is not like coming back with her sisters. You know, I don't know if she's promised her children and her nephew stardom and, you know, promised them that they could sing with her as Sister Sledge. I don't know what the whole deal is about that. But as it stands right now, it looks like Debbie is holding the reins for Sister Sledge. Kathy and Kim are none too pleased with this. The only thing they want to do is become the original Sister Sledge again. And I'm not going to lie, I would like to see the original Sister Sledge again. And y'all, we are at the end of this video, but I do want to say something like from the heart for real. I really hate that these sisters are feuding like this. I have four sisters myself, okay? We have had our feuds and they hurt. They hurt very badly. They sting. I love my sisters. And, and nothing hurts worse than a bond that you have with your sister that is broken. And so I really hope that they can get it all together and bring it together. And, you know, they've already lost Joni. So let's not make it to where every time somebody passes away, that's when we come to get together and then we're mad again. But this is the end of the video of the old Hollywood scandalous tale of Sister Sledge. I love you guys so much. Go ahead and click like and subscribe. I will be back with another video soon. Bye.